today I'm going to talk about Bridge Race and Color Match, two of our recent uh, hit games, as you may all know. And I wanted to give some trips and uh, tips and tricks regarding these games. And I thought, like, what could be the best way to do that? And obviously, when you want to hear a tip and trick from someone, you also want to hear the backstory behind the this game's success, these games' success. So I thought the best way to do this is to give you the story uh, of what happened when we first start working with bridge race and also color match so that uh, we can give the bits of tricks and tips uh, in between these uh, storyline. So I'll just start. Uh, as you know, uh, we are a studio who is working with Supersonic Studios at the moment as a publisher. And we are a team of, let me introduce myself as well. I'm Nebi. I'm the CEO of Garaval Games. I'm a computer engineer myself. And we have a team of 11 people at the moment based in Istanbul. And we've started working remotely. Uh, actually, you could call it hybrid uh, for the last one year, actually. That's been long. And two of our successful games, by the way, we should maybe uh, focus on that subject as well have been launched while we were working here hybrid actually remote mostly remote so uh when you think about it it doesn't always need a uh, tangible need a concrete uh working environment when you want to launch games I and mean, when you want when you want to have a successful story uh of uh hit games so we were founded in january 2021 last year's beginning but we also have a one and a half years of experience before so uh, what have we done there? We have worked with Voodoo for a year and uh, we have launched, not launched, but tested, let's say, uh, around 50 or more prototypes. And until now, if you ask us, we have more than hundreds, hundred uh, prototypes, maybe 150 prototypes that have been tested. Yes, two of them have been successful. But as you know, every success has a, a fail story behind it as well which we will talk with uh, Sammy <laughs> from Ketchup tomorrow. So you could watch that as well in this conference. But in this uh, presentation and this story, I'll talk more about the success. Uh, obviously, that success will have failures as well, but not of other games, but specifically Bridge Race and Color Match. Bridge Race was launched on March 2021, and we have made it uh, to the top charts by then. Uh, and stayed there for a long amount of time. Actually, last month we've seen that we were also, uh, again, one of the top five games. So that's really uh, flattering for us. I mean, we are really proud of Bridge Race. And recently we have launched a coloring match, color match also. Uh, we just couldn't get the name from App Store. So we called coloring match on App Store, but on Google Play, it's called color match on December, 2021. And for the last two months, it's like never dropped down from top five, I guess, uh, as far as we've seen. And that's really something to be proud of as well. We are proud of our two games and I'll jump into the details. Let's start with Bridge Race. It's again, most downloaded hyper casual game of 2021. And uh, I'd like to, in advance, thank my team, thank everyone that's helped us become this huge and this successful, including Supersonic, our teammates, our families and everyone, you know, this is not just one uh, type of tip that I can give you, but all environmental things will affect you in your story of success. So it's sometimes maybe called chance, but if you uh, dedicate yourself to work ambitiously uh, on a subject that you really want to become successful at, you could do that. And for us, that was the story. And until now, Bridge Race has been downloaded more than 20, 220 million times worldwide. And uh, this is not just Google Play, also includes a huge uh, amount of App Store downloads around more than, I guess, a quarter of it is uh, App Store downloads. And it's number one in overall top charts. Uh, it's, been, it's been number one in overall top charts in 2020, 22 countries. And in games top charts in 92 countries and racing charts in all countries 
we have become first game in the world. And I could say that from the beginning, the iteration phase of Bridge Race has taken more than one year, maybe. And I'll start with the oldest version. You'll be shocked to see that uh, this is tested in 2019 November and while we were working with Voodoo. You may wonder what this game is all about. What is this really? What's the relation with uh, bridge race and field holes? This is one of the first versions. But every time we iterate a game, we always try to come up with uh, ideas from previous games. So that's why I want to include field holes as well. This is one of the very first games that we tested while we were even, I could call amateurs in this sector. And we tested it Voodoo and we got really bad CPIs. But one core mechanism that was filling holes to complete something was attractive looking for us. And we thought this mechanism could uh, in the end be iterated on different type of uh, environments with maybe a character of its own. You see, there's just one ball, a white ball that's sticking out there. And you don't have a character. You see uh, that you cannot pass the bridge without filling the holes. But that's not really explanatory, is it? I mean, we wanted to make this more enjoyable looking in the future by keeping the core mechanism alive, which was to fill holes, to complete something, and proceed progress uh, on the stage or to another stage. So we tested this. We got really bad CPI, really bad retention, really bad everything. But we still we thought the uh, intuitive mechanism was there. Uh, so we kept on going with this mechanism. And second version, it's ball fighters. This really got a nice CPI of nine cents, the game you see. And this is the advertisement. This is the creative that got the nine cents. But it was February 2020. And uh, what we've changed here, as you can basically see, we introduced the character. And uh, this character uh, collects balls of its own color. So a tip that I can give all of you out there is colors are really universal symbols. If you plan on a game that's got different mechanism in it and that's maybe got different players in it, maybe just try to make all of them different colors so that they're distinctive from each other. And uh, here we introduced AIs, I mean, IO mechanism, bots to the game. So uh, the reason we wanted to do that is because I believe maybe IO games have a trend and that trend will end, but I don't think so. I mean, uh, I believe that the games should have a, like an opponent when you play a game. Like when we were kids, we were playing games uh, with the toys. Yeah, but the more enjoyable ones were against, not against, but together with your friends or cousins or you know siblings. I believe that these type of games will still hold in the future as well. And we will also create new IO games in the future as well. This doesn't mean we will not, uh, we will always fake the AI. We, we want to also grow this game and make it a multiplayer game as well. I mean, with the servers, uh, you could play it with your friends. But uh, at that moment, when we create ball fighters, we thought this was a nice mechanism with AIs so people could enjoy. They did. And it got 35 to 40% 40, 40 of day one and more than 600 seconds of playtime, which was good. But, you know, by then uh, we were told that the threshold for a good retention should have been 45 day one. Yeah, this might, this might seem uh, sad for some of you. It was also for us. We were kind of like, like thinking this game could be published. But uh, then again, we wanted to continue iterations to reach the threshold of our publisher. And uh, another thing that I may have not pointed out is that uh, the difference between this one and this one is that stages are separate from each other. So there's this thing called zoning in hyper casual games, which I think you should all be careful about while creating your games. Just uh, try to make the stage look uh, simple for the player to set the boundaries. I mean, when a player plays in the game, the boundaries should be strict. From one stage to another, it should be really modular looking, really distinctive looking. So we thought this uh, separation 
could work and we separated all stages and that worked in this case actually so it's as you see the bridges here are connected but the you know distinction between the first and second parts are not that clear so we thought that this is a better idea to separate the stages so we had a nice nice sense of cpi here what should we do we worked on eight different iterations in a span of three months that was a long time for us but we believed in it we wanted to continue and we had the kpis i mean why bother with creating different games right so we changed the background as you can see here we added obstacles as you can see around this gift uh, there are glass walls around here which did not work by the way another tip <laughs> during this story you by the way you can ask your questions uh, and I'll respond to them at the end of the session. But uh, I want to say that people don't like restrictive things. So here, when we implemented the obstacles in the stage to give more of a strategic feeling, you know, to we were thinking like if there were obstacles, people would think, okay, I have to go right or left so that this could give a more challenging look to the game. But in the end, if it's not a very strong looking obstacle, like, it is just an obstacle. You see what I mean? Like, it's an obstacle on the way of people. That's not fun. So that did not that did not work on this situation. Stages have changed, as you can see. the The backgrounds have changed, and we have tried to make it more fancy looking. But backgrounds did not work either. There are backgrounds all around this stage, and we've tested different videos from previous uh, successful creatives as well. And the first creative, this one, performed much better than all these eight iterations. So that that means we had something here. This was clear, and uh, as you can see, the stage color is yellow, kind of like not like direct flashing white like this. And uh, this is more simple looking, simply said. We have introduced bonus levels. And these bonus levels had different mechanisms. Like here, you can control the character with joystick. But in these other uh, levels, bonus levels, we had to uh, control the character with a swerve mechanism. So another tip I can give you here is that never introduce a different control mechanism for your main character. Let's say if it's a joystick, don't introduce a swerve mechanism to the character in the same game because People will be like shocked to see how they how they're going to control the same character on a different level. So that totally failed, and we tested it with bigger balls, as you can see here. We thought maybe these balls were kind of small. You see, they are small actually, but still, this did not perform better than this video. So we assumed that bigger balls did not work either. And as you can see in this first video, there are backs which look like glass bags by the back of the player. But here we introduced different bags with uh, different sizes, actually. You could upgrade your bag as you proceeded, progressed between levels. And that did not, that did not work either. I'm going to tell you why, because stacking mechanism was a much better idea. And we did not, we did not think about that at this stage. And you, as you know, Bridge Race has a stacking mechanism now. This is uh, because people would like to see how many uh, units of some source they can collect, they they do collect. And in here, you cannot see how many balls you can you collect because they're like uh, scrambled into each other. Like they're, they're not visible at all. They're not separate from each other. And we have introduced power-ups. And uh, for this game, it was totally nonsense because, <laughs> again, uh, when we introduced magnet power up, that was like a hack, and people got all the balls at the stage at once. We thought it could be fun that some people could feel like cheating in the game could uh, make them feel better, like in shortcut run, for example. That's that game is totally made on cheating mechanism. Like you cheat and go on different path, and that's uh, like a risk reward mechanism for you. But here it did not work. We also introduced a one versus one mode where we thought maybe these five people racing at, uh, against each other was kind of like, uh, you know, complex looking. But one versus one did not work either. We added tutorial, which was the, I mean, uh, the most destructive thing for the CPI and the retention, I guess. Because when we introduced the tutorial, we 
did not let the players uh, play the game uh, as, I mean, unless they touched on some button or uh, they did some specific task. And this is something people hate, you know. They do not want to be told what they have to do. Yes, you can just write down uh, on the at the bottom or at the top part of the uh, screen to explain what the game is all about. But if you restrict people to do that specific task, then some people who do not do that will definitely quit the game as soon as possible because they will think this is buggy. So in brief, none of these iterations worked and none of them have increased retention to above 40%. So this is a different game uh, where we thought, as you can see, this this gives you a vibe of cube surfs and fall guys, right? This uh, was actually tested like eight months later, uh, eight months after the first test of ball fighters, and we thought, let's try something trendy and keep the core mechanism still alive. You see, when you try to come up with a game idea, don't just think about trends and what you can do like there are auto walker games all around uh nowadays i mean that was a trend like two three months ago as well and people just try to do some new auto walker game by just adding a little change to the first games and uh that did not work because when you introduce a new mechanism that's not really new people think that it's uh, just a copy so uh when you have a core mechanism at hand then you could add some stuff from other games and that's not like copying because you totally have a different game here we have a multiplayer game i mean io game and if you get the cube software mechanism in it maybe it will work maybe it will not but this is not a copy so you could give it a try and uh we we wanted to make it feel more like fall guys so it looks more fancy as you can see now and there's a circus feeling to it you see the bear and uh, make the teddy bear look like he's from a circus or something. And we thought this could work. And it did actually, because when we were iterating on ball fighters with these iterations, none of them brought like uh, 80 cents CPI. But the first video was still like uh, around 20 cents when we tested it, even eight months later, eight or nine months later. But for this game, which was totally new, 80 cents was something promising, but uh, we did not want to iterate on it because we had other games at hand then, and uh, we uh, shut down with this project as well. So when we uh, started working with Supersonic, which was a good idea for us because we believed they were really exciting publishers and uh, could give us really good uh, feedback and we, we started working with them. We were kind of excited to test out our previous games as well. What we did was, this is another tip uh, that I could give you here. If you if you've produced ton of games in the past, when you, when you don't have new ideas at hand or when the time is passed, like if it's eight months or nine months or one year later, you could test these games again, if you believe some of them could perform better. Because time has changed and you could maybe add something more to it. You see, here what we did was directly take ball fighters and introduce the stacking mechanism. Because stacking mechanism was by then uh, one of the most useful mechanisms out there. So we uh, tried it. It did not bring good results, promising, promising results. But we still wanted to follow because we believe there was something to this game the game changer mechanism was the bridge actually hence the name of bridge race we added the bridge and here we can see that you are filling the holes and this as i mentioned in the in the uh, previous slides the completion of something incomplete that feeling is given here uh, in the best way possible because the bridge is there and it's something that's gonna help you get from point a to point b and that's hole like there's a hole in it so you have to fill it yes the feeling filling of holes here is also satisfactory but in the end you don't know what's going to happen when you fill these holes you see 
yeah, it's full and it gets you from point A to B, but there's no logic to it. But here, the logic is there. It's very simple. You walk on the bridge that you just created. So it was really intuitive, but still got one, one dollar of CPI. You may think now why these guys are trying so hard to make this game a hit after one year. That The reason here is different because one dollar CPI at the end of 2021, I mean, around the Christmas season, was something actually good because by then we had some games with four or five dollars of CPI. So, of course, we wanted to test it in January or February of 2021, last year, but we also wanted to make a big change, which was the stairs. The stairs was the magic touch. Uh, and we, when we added it, as you can see, the next stage is not really that visible. So that makes you curious about what's going to be out there on the next stage and does you want to proceed by getting higher, not in that sense, again, <laughs> but uh, here people, I think, uh, like the idea and they, that's why we got 20 cents of CPI and when we iterated on it and we got 705, 750 seconds of playtime and more than 40% of day one and even more than 10% of day seven and it was ready for the launch and here we are. But live ops is something that uh, I think we should focus on as well. It did not enter. I mean, the first results are okay, but you see there's ARPU, the average revenue per user in it. And we had to in increase it to stay on the top charts again. So what we did was to iterate on this game all the time. And we tested with A-B tests. We test maybe more than 150 variants of A-B tests, which means we tested different colors, we tested different stages, we tested different stage orders, we tested different characters as main characters. We tested different amount of stairs from first level to the second. So all you could think about, all the variables in this game, we tested. And this was a long time. And we even had some variants which performed much better than the per, uh, previous ones. So we were actually happy about testing them. We introduced bonus and boss levels. This is the boss level, as you can see. We introduced shop. We introduced a lot of new characters that are now around 10 different bundles to the game. And they're like wizard bundles, superhero bundles and all. And we still keep updating the game. Recently, we have added Christmas theme and cartoon bundles. We have some cool characters from old cartoons that we've seen like Tom and Jerry. I'm not going to give the name actually, uh, because that might be trademark. But still, Bridge Race story is like this. I may take any questions you have, but I will first talk about color match before I come to answer your questions. The story of color match is not that long. I'll tell you that. Maybe in different uh, presentations, I'll give more detail to it. But right now, it's like in the middle, and we want to introduce, we want to implement new mechanisms to it. But this game is something we are really proud of again because we have achieved a huge success by becoming top chart in the in. Um, says one countries, but it's 11, sorry about that. Uh, overall uh, top charts, we have become first in 11 countries and in games top charts, we become first in 48 countries. And recently we have heard from the reports that in December, 2021, last month of last year, we are the most downloaded, color match is the most downloaded hyper casual game. And in January, again, the same. And for the last two months, we haven't dropped down from the first three. And here we, actually wanted to prove something. You know, we've done an IO game, a multiplayer looking game, and we said we could do ASMR as well. Let's choose an idea. By the way, the ideation, this, uh, this is something maybe I should have talked about in the beginning. Ideation phase is the most important phase. If you wanna hop, in a, hop, into, hop into an idea, you should think about uh, the eligibility, the the uniqueness, the innovativeness of this idea in advance before you even touch the keypad, uh, touch the keyboard and open the project. I mean, this is something crucial because you will maybe spend a week or two just prototyping, but don't just spend that time for something you do not believe will be successful. First, you have to believe it, it will be successful and you want to watch the market carefully for that, not just for copying the other games, but to see what's not made out there, you see? Because when you see old games that's been made out there, you can also uh, see if some new idea is totally different from the other games or not. 
So this is actually something we are always uh, watching an eye on and keeping an eye on. And this trend that I have seen in Reddit on Reddit uh, was something really interesting for me because I believed uh, there was a huge strategy in this game. Because you see, in RGB there are at least how many like uh, 256 cube amount of uh, colors out there. So if you mix them up, you get millions, billions of different colors. So this was something uh, really uh, enjoyable for me because I thought we could introduce, if we introduce such a game, we could introduce many different levels to it. So we actually uh, were impressed by this mechanism, which we've seen on Reddit. But the first results did not bring promising results, as you can see, because we had only one level to the game. This is great in-game metrics, as you can see. It's like 4.5% of day one, 200 seconds of playtime. But we thought the KPIs were good because I didn't write it here, but the CPI was around 50 cents. We iterated it with uh, yep. hundreds or more levels, and we got these nice metrics here. Which are... The B, I'm, I'm very sorry to, to interrupt you. We're running out of time. I would appreciate if you could uh, wrap up uh, your speech. And um, uh, that was actually the last, last, uh, last one. I, I'll, I'll just uh, share three other screenshots because I wanted to finish with coloring match as well and let people know of the little bit of story of it. So here you can see that the playtime and the retention increased drastically when we introduced more than 100 levels with different objects. But late retention was still problematic, by the way, around the end of September and beginning of October. So we we made some marginal change here. We introduced a 3D UI, we, could, we call it now. That's not something <laughs> that's called in the uh, game uh, development, but we call it 3D UI, where we can tap on different rooms and open up different parts of the game. And we introduced spray painting and we introduced auction where you could sell the object. And with more than 11% of day seven, we cracked the late retention as well. Stayed in the top five for a two month period now. And we are still making huge improvements to the game. Thank you for listening to me. Nabi, thank you so much. It was really impressive. I would uh, would like to uh, continue speaking to you and asking a lot of questions. Uh, but really, really, we ran out of time. I would appreciate if you can uh, stay some longer and answer in the text chat to guys who brought their questions uh, there, uh, because interest uh, to your speech is really big. Thank you so Thank much you. for Thank joining you. us. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. And have a great day. Thank you.